Many of the best retro toy lines that we grew up with in the 70s and 80s were inspired by pop culture properties, with the most successful toy lines being based on movies, comics, and cartoons. But in this video, we're gonna take a look at the missed opportunities, the top 10 best retro properties to never get a decent toy line. And here we go. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome to Analog Toys where we're obsessed with bringing you the history of vintage toys and action figures. Now before we get started, let me quickly state that a lot of the properties we're gonna to discuss today did eventually get toy lines, but they were all after the fact. What I'm discussing today is the retro properties that truly deserved a toy line at the time of their release. And kicking us off in the number 10 slot is the TV show, Monkey. This series centered on the title character of Monkey, a skilled fighter who becomes the brash king of a monkey tribe, who the title song claims was the punkiest monkey that ever popped. Monkey was born from an egg that grew out of a mountain top and he was imprisoned under the mountain for 500 years in order to learn patience. Eventually Monkey is released by the monk Tripitaka to undertake a pilgrimage to India to retrieve holy scriptures and the pair are joined on their quest by two magical monsters named Pigsy and Sandy. Most American viewers that I've spoken to about the Monkey TV series are not familiar with the show, leading me to believe that it was never aired in the US, but this cult Japanese program was staple television viewing for young boys who grew up in the UK in the early 80s. With its supernatural themes, wacky action and cast of colourful characters, the Monkey TV series was ripe for development into an action figure toy line, but sadly, we never got one. Taking the number 9 slot on the list is the classic cartoon Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. This animated television series was produced by Marvel Productions and originally aired from 1981 to 1983. The show's storyline centred on Peter Parker, Bobby Drake and Angelica Jones and their alter egos, Spider-Man, Iceman and Firestar. All of these characters are college students at Empire State University and after the superheroes work together to defeat the Beetle and recover the power booster that was stolen from Tony Stark, the trio decide to team up permanently as the Spider Friends. They live together in Aunt May's home with her pet dog, Ms. Lion. Together, the Spider Friends battle various supervillains in each episode of the series. The Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends cartoon was massively popular with the children of the early 80s, but this popularity never spawned an action figure toy line. A few years ago, Hasbro did release a Toys R Us exclusive action figure three pack of the Spider Friends that is difficult to acquire today and sells for big bucks, but it arrived over 30 years too late for this Spider-Man fan. Just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Number eight on the list is the 70s TV show, Kung Fu. Kung Fu is an American television series that combined a melting pot of different genres, action, adventure, martial arts, and the classic Western to create a very entertaining show that became a pop culture phenomenon in the early 70s. The series stars David Carradine in the lead role and the story follows the adventures of Kane, a Shaolin monk who travels through the Old West, armed only with his spiritual training and his skills in martial arts. The show was hugely popular at the time of its release and still has a cult following today. And while we did get a few Kung Fu related toys, None of them were that good, and you should check out the excellent video over on the Brick Mantooth YouTube channel if you want to learn more about these toys. Given that Gabriel's Lone Ranger toy line was popular at the same time as Kung Fu was airing on television, it's a shame we never got a decent cane action figure that we could bring into this Western play environment. Snatch the pebble from my hand. Coming in at number seven is Judge Dredd. The only comic entry on the list, Judge Dredd is the most well-known character to come out of the hit British comic 2000 AD, which was initially published by IPC Media. The character of Judge Dredd is a law enforcement and judicial officer in the dystopian future locale of Mega City, which covers most of the east coast of North America. He is a street judge, empowered to summarily arrest, convict, sentence and execute criminals. Over the years, Judge Dredd has been hailed as one of the best satires of American and British culture, with an uncanny trend to predict upcoming events such as rampant mass surveillance and the rise of populist leaders. The character has also been portrayed twice on the big screen, with the first attempt being an ill-advised star vehicle for Sylvester Stallone, and then in the highly underrated movie Dread, released in 2012. Despite the character's immense popularity, we never received a retro toy line to do Judge Dredd uh, justice, no pun intended. How do you plead? 
And at number six on the list is the space opera film, Flash Gordon. Based on the popular comic strip by Alex Raymond and making its cinematic debut in 1980, Flash Gordon is a campy cult classic and the true definition of a guilty pleasure. In the movie, Flash Gordon, Dale Arden and Dr. Zarkov travel to the fictional planet Mongo, where the planet's ruler, Ming the Merciless, is bent on destroying the Earth. Throughout Flash's adventures, we are introduced to a colourful cast of supporting characters, including Prince Baron, Prince Volton and his Hawkmen, and Clytus, the head of Ming's secret police. The Flash Gordon franchise has had many different toys over the years. In fact, I've actually made another top 10 video counting down the best toy iterations. But for some reason, the 1980 movie never got a related toy line. We would have to wait until 2007 before toy company Biff Bang Pow would finally make action figures based on the movie. And while these are quite impressive toys, they were 27 years too late. Gordon's alive! Taking the number five slot is another cult movie, Big Trouble in Little China. This fantasy martial arts comedy film from 1986 was directed by the legendary John Carpenter and stars Kurt Russell in the lead role. The film tells the story of Jack Burton, who helps his friend Wang Chi rescue Wang's green-eyed fiancé from bandits in San Francisco's Chinatown. Together they venture into the mysterious underworld beneath Chinatown, where they face an ancient sorcerer named Lo Pan, who requires a woman with green eyes to marry him in order to release him from a centuries-old curse. The film was a commercial failure, grossing only about half its estimated budget in North America, which is probably why there was never an accompanying toy line, but despite this, the film was a hell of a lot of fun and has become a cult classic today. The underworld of Chinatown is perfect for adaption into a series of action figure playsets, and what child wouldn't have wanted figures of the three masters, Thunder, Rain and Lightning. Another major missed opportunity here. What the hell? Coming in at number four is Thunder the Barbarian. This series was a Saturday morning cartoon produced by Ruby Spears Productions, which aired from 1980 to 1981, and was a pretty decent rating success. The cartoon is set in a post-apocalyptic future wasteland, which is divided into kingdoms that are ruled by wizards, and the story's hero, Thundar, travels the world on horseback, accompanied by the young sorceress, Princess Ariel, and Ookla the Mock, and does battle with evil wizards who combine magical spells with reanimating technologies from the pre-catastrophe world. Taking elements from Star Wars such as the hero's weapon, the Sun Sword, clearly being a reimagined lightsaber, Thunder the Barbarian was a classic Saturday morning cartoon that garnered a legion of childhood fans. Decades later, the Toynami Company did produce a range of Thunder action figures, which were clearly aimed at the adult collector, meaning that once again the children of the 80s missed out on toys that many of them wanted. The answer is no! As we get closer to the top slot, the number three entry is the classic 80s adventure movie, The Goonies. Released in 1985 and directed by Richard Donner, The Goonies is an adventure comedy film that follows a band of kids from an Oregon neighborhood known as the Goondocks. In the film, the Goonies attempt to save their home from foreclosure by following an old treasure map that will hopefully lead them to the long lost treasure of a 17th century pirate known as One-Eyed Willie. During their adventure, the Goonies must evade both deadly booby traps and the Fratelli crime family, which includes Francis and Jake and their mama, as well as their deformed and immensely strong brother, Sloth, who is one of the highlights of the movie. The Goonies has everything a toy company needs to develop a successful toy line, including an interesting cast of characters that would make for great action figures, a potential vehicle in the form of the Fratelli's powerful Jeep Cherokee, and countless opportunities for play sets. I mean, I can see it now. The centerpiece of the entire toy line would have to be One-Eyed Willie's hidden pirate ship, the Inferno. And to this day, I'm still disappointed that this toy doesn't exist. Goonies never say die! Taking the number two slot is the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Easily one of the best animated TV shows of the 1980s, Dungeons and Dragons was inspired by the role-playing game of the same name that rose to popularity during the 1970s and the cartoon focused on a group of six friends who were transported into the titular realm and follow their adventures as they try to find their way home with the help of their guide, Dungeon Master. Before you say it, I can hear your cries. You did get a Dungeons & Dragons toy line, and we did, but it wasn't based on the cartoon. 
The action figures hit stores in 1983 at the same time the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon bowed on TV. But you might not have noticed. Where the television show was called Dungeons & Dragons, the LJN toy line was released under the banner Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, and none of the main characters from the cartoon were produced as part of the line. And that is all we 80s kids really wanted. We wanted action figures of the characters depicted in the cartoon. But alas, we got Ringle Run the Good Wizard instead of Dungeon Master. Hey, nice timing, your shortness. Where were you when we needed an exterminator? Now, this is usually the point in the video where we announce our worst entry. But considering this is a list of toy lines that didn't even exist, how about we go for a toy line that should never have been made? The Love Boat. Why, oh why, did Mego ever decide to design and manufacture Love Boat action figures? It makes no sense. I mean, what marketing executive greenlit this decision? There are so many other worthy properties to choose from. This list proves it. Any way you look at it, choosing to make action figures based on the characters in Love Boat is a regretful decision, more than likely made by a marketing employee who was drunk at the wheel. <laughs> and so coming in at number one is the greatest missed toy opportunity of all time, the Ghostbusters movie. This supernatural comedy film from 1984 starred a who's who of Saturday Night Live comedians, including Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, and was incredibly popular upon its release, quickly growing into a cult phenomenon. In the movie, the characters of Peter Venkman, Ray Stantz and Egon Spengler are scientists at Columbia University investigating the paranormal. Following their first encounter with a ghost manifesting at the New York Public Library, the dean of the university fires them and dismisses the credibility of their research. In response, they create the Ghostbusters, a paranormal investigation and elimination service. They convert a disused firehouse, develop high-tech equipment to capture and contain ghosts, and adapt an old hearse into the Exomobile, with the movie following their attempts to protect New York City from the supernatural. Admittedly, we did get Ghostbusters action figures, but these were based on the cartoon and not released until 1986. In my opinion, Kenner's range of Ghostbusters toys based on the cartoon were okay. Definitely not a great toy line, which makes for a tantalizing what if. This is the kind of thing that keeps me awake at night. What if they had made toys based on the 1984 Ghostbusters movie? Would they have been lackluster like the figures based on the cartoon? Or would they have been truly classic? Helping to define the action figure landscape of the 1980s. And it's a question that we will never know the answer to. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. So that's our list of the top 10 best retro properties to never get a toy line. If you like this video and you want to check out some of our other top 10s, you can click right here. Or if you want to see Retro Blasting's Dungeons and Dragons video, you can click right here. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.